Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform an ordinal logistic regression using SPSS, and we are going to be testing a proportional odds model. Now before I get started, I do want to mention that underneath the video description, you will find a link to the SPSS data file that I'll be working from in this presentation, so you can download a copy of the data to follow along. You will also find a link to a PowerPoint that is going to contain a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video presentation. Now briefly, ordinal logistic regression is carried out in those cases where you have a dependent variable that comes in the form of ordered categories. So unlike uh, linear regression, which involves uh, modeling predictors of a continuous dependent variable, ordinal logistic regression involves uh, modeling predictors of the probability of a case falling at or below a given category J or above category J on the dependent variable. So with that in mind, let's briefly look at our example data. So what we're going to be doing here is um, predicting uh, a, a person's level of confidence in the scientific community as a function of several uh, variables including uh, the count of a number of words on a vocabulary test, self-identified political conservatism, uh, gender identification, and also highest degree attained. So this data is actually uh, coming from the General Social Survey from 2018. And as I said before, you can obtain a copy of this data by following the link underneath the video description. So in our model, our dependent variable is confidence in the scientific community. So it's this variable right here, and it has three levels. So it's coded one for hardly any confidence, two indicating only some confidence, and three indicating a great deal of confidence. So clearly this uh, represents an ordered categorical variable. So our independent variables within our model um, include degree so again that's highest degree attained for a given person so that's our variable right there we have female that's our gender identification variable and it's coded zero where a person indicated identifying as male one where a person identified as female we have uh, this political views variable right here so it's uh, it's uh, basically a scale variable uh, where the scale ranges from 1 equals extremely liberal to 7 equals extremely conservative and then we have this word sum variable right here and so that's that vocabulary test I was telling you about which is part of the general social survey okay so here's our data set opened up in SPSS and currently I'm working on SPSS 20 version 28 so if yours looks a little bit different um, that's okay it's uh, the functions are exactly uh, the same so at any rate our dependent variable is going to be this variable right here this is our um, our confidence variable there's our word sum variable political views variable degree and then there are female variable right here so to run our analysis we're going to go to analyze go to regression and then go down to ordinal we'll click on that and so we get our little box right here and what we'll do is move our variables over to the appropriate uh, boxes so we're going to move our confidence and scientific community uh, variable over to the dependent variable box we're going to move our highest degree attained over to the covariate box we're going to move gender identification uh, also to the covariate box. Um, we could treat it as a factor, but I'm going to leave it as a covariate, which is perfectly permissible when you have a binary uh, independent variable. So next we'll move our uh, Paul Kahn or Paul Views variable over to the covariates box and then number of words correct uh, for the vocabulary test over to that box as well. So next, uh, if we click on options, uh, we're actually going to leave everything the same, but we're going to make sure that this link uh, function down here we're going to leave this set at logit under output we're going to select uh, test of parallel lines that's going to be used to test the proportional odds assumption with our data and we're going to go ahead and leave the default uh, clicked right here for including multinomial constant in the PowerPoint I actually start off by clicking on this other one right here excluding multinomial con uh, constant um, that just to demonstrate the computation of McFadden pseudo R squared, but we're going to just leave the standard uh, default on and uh, go ahead and continue right there. 
Okay, so with those selections, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now we have our output. So we'll kind of scroll down it a bit here. Uh, first off, you'll notice that we have indices uh, and tests related to the overall model fit. So you'll see in this first box right here, we have model fitting information. The values in this column right here, the negative 2 times the log likelihood, these are referred to as model deviances. And so basically the model deviance is an indicator of uh, lack of fit, for, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, so a value of zero for the model deviance would indicate a perfect fit, basically with a saturated model, and uh, values that are increasingly deviating in the positive direction from zero would indicate worsening fit. So we have two model deviances that are given right here. We have uh, the model deviance for an intercept only model and then the model deviance for the final model, basically our model containing the full set of predictors. So the expectation is, is that if we only had a model with the intercept included, and that's also referred to as a null model, we would expect the fit to be worse than that of our model containing our predictors. And you can see that uh, the uh, deviance for the intercept only model of 382.564 is greater than the deviance for our uh, final or full model, uh, that deviance being 339.011. Now, the deviance, um, you know, we can kind of look at that and just kind of get an idea about whether our model containing the predictors um, is an improvement in fit, but we're not able to really test whether it's a significant improvement in fit just by looking at those deviances. So what we can use is a likelihood ratio chi-square test. So this chi-square value right here is computed as a difference between those two model deviances. So it's uh, the deviance for intercept only model minus the deviance for the final model. So that gets us this chi-square value. And so we can perform a chi-square test. Then the, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of predictors in our model. And then we have a significance level that's given right here. So we have P less than 0.001. And so what that's telling us then is that our model containing the uh, full set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit relative to a null or intercept only model. You'll see the next set of uh, indices right here, or, or tests, excuse me, uh, are goodness of fit tests. We have Pearson chi-square and deviance chi-square. And so uh, in a nutshell, what we're looking for with these tests uh, are non-significant results. So if we look in this column of uh, that contains p-values right here, we see that uh, both of these are uh, quite high and certainly exceed the conventional 0.05 level. So in both of these cases, that would be an indication that our model represents a, a good fit to the data. If we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that we have pseudo R square values. So in the context of logistic regression, we have to keep in mind that uh, we can't compute the R square that we're typically familiar with in the context of linear regression. So what we have are sort of analogies to the R square value that we compute in uh, linear regression. And so these are that's why they're called pseudo R square values. So McFadden's pseudo R square value is the one that I kind of go over more in uh, the PowerPoint. And this basically would represent the proportionate improvement in fit. Um, of a model containing our predictors relative to the intercept only model. So you can think about the value of 0 0.079 as indicating that our model containing the full set of predictors represents approximately an 8% improvement in fit relative to the null or intercept only model. So if we scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have our table of parameter estimates. So we're going to be concentrating mainly on the regression slopes um, in this column right here that says estimate. So you'll see that we've got degree, we've got female, Paul views right here, and uh, word sum right here. So these are our predictor variables and we have our regression slopes. And so just kind of keep in mind though that the regression slopes are reflecting the predicted change in the log odds of falling into a higher as opposed to a lower category on our dependent variable. So basically a positive slope would indicate that higher values on our predictor variable are associated with a greater confidence in the scientific community 
whereas a negative slope would indicate that higher values on the uh, predictor are associated with le uh, lower confidence in the scientific community. So as we're looking at these, you can see that the slope for degree is positive, and you can see that we have statistical significance right there. So individuals uh, with higher degrees express greater confidence in uh, the scientific community. You can see that our female, our gender identification variable right here, we have a negative slope. Uh, and given the coding, uh, which is 0 equals uh, male, 1 uh, uh, indicates a person identifying as female, uh, that would indicate that persons identifying as female are less confident in the scientific community. And you can see that we have statistical significance at the conventional 0.05 level for that predictor. Next, you can see that we have Paul views. We have a negative slope right here, um, but you can see that we do not have statistical significance. So essentially, the uh, political conservatism or the self-identified political conservatism was unrelated to confidence in the scientific community. Then finally, we have our word sum coming from the vocabulary test. You can see the slope is positive, and we have statistical significance. So individuals scoring higher uh, on this vocabulary test also tended to express greater confidence in the scientific community. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at the test of parallel lines. So one of the assumptions of the proportional odds model is that the regression slopes or the effects of our predictors on our dependent variable are essentially consistent or constant across levels of our the categories on our dependent variable. And I do discuss uh, what that means a little bit more in detail within the PowerPoint. So we'll just kind of briefly look at our significance test right here. And so the basic idea with this significance test, uh, if we find non-significance for this test of parallel lines, then we would assume that we have the, the that the proportional odds assumption is met. Um, if we find statistical significance, then we would have a situation where the proportional odds assumption would not be met. And if the assumption is not met, then we might consider an alternative uh, approach to modeling our data, such as a partial proportional odds model or a multinomial uh, logistic regression model. Okay, something else to note, uh, as you're looking at the parameter estimates table right here, you'll notice that we do not have any odds ratios that are given. And there's actually, um, that can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, there's actually a couple of ways that you can obtain the odds ratios. I discussed that a little bit in the PowerPoint. Uh, one of the quickest ways, though, to obtain the odds ratios for those uh, predictor variables is to run the analysis using the general linear or generalized linear models option. So if you go to generalized linear models and click on that, we can go to uh, the type of model, click on ordinal logistic right here. Uh, we can go to response and we'll move our dependent variable confidence in the scientific community over to the dependent box. We're going to leave our category order as ascending. So we're going to leave this as ascending. That is uh, consistent with um, our approach, uh, our previous approach. Then we're going to click on predictors and we can move those variables over. So we'll move our um, our variable, let's see here, okay, we'll move our highest degree over to the covariance box. We'll follow that up with our gender identification variable, uh, Paul Con or Paul Views right there, and then we'll move our number of words uh, over here. So then we'll click on model and we can highlight all of our variables and move them over to this box. Under estimation we'll leave everything as is and click on statistics and we'll click on include exponential parameter estimates. So when we click on that and then on OK we'll get our output and it's going to look a little bit different from what we had before. You'll notice that at the top right here we have these goodness of fit uh, indices. There's our model deviance um, and our um, and uh, there's a Pearson chi-square that we'd seen before. These are the degrees of freedom uh, associated with those. You can see that we have the log likelihood that's given right here. Uh, we have some other indices such as a Keike's information criterion, Bayesian information criterion right here. So I talk a little bit about those um, 
in the PowerPoint uh, as a possibility for uh, making a decision as to whether to go with an ordinal logistic regression uh, proportional odds model versus a multinomial. So anyway, we'll scroll down. You can see the omnibus test that's given. This is uh, that original likelihood ratio chi-square that I went over previously. So there's the chi-square value, degrees of freedom, and then the significance level. And then when we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our table of parameter estimates. So the values in this B column are consistent with the values that were in the estimates column from our previous output. You'll see that we have our hypothesis test results and so forth. But then over here, we've got the odds ratios. So you can see that these, these values right here in this box are the odds ratios associated with each of our predictor variables. So you can think of the odds ratio as basically the multiplicative change in odds per unit increase on the predictor variable. So as you're looking at the highest degree predictor right here, the odds ratio is 1.469. So for every uh, one unit increase on uh, this highest degree variable right here, uh, the odds change, uh, the odds of falling into a higher as opposed to a lower category change by a factor of 1.469. So that means that the odds are increasing. The gender identification variable right here, you can see the odds is 0 0.630. So remember, it's coded 0 for uh, male and 1 for female. So this uh, value right here, the 0 0.630, indicates that persons identified as female uh, the odds of them falling in a higher as opposed to a lower category is 0.63 times that of males. So in other words, basically, the odds of females falling into a higher category um, are less than the odds of persons identified as male. Then we have our Paul Kahn or Paul Views variable right here, and you can see that uh, the odds is 0.915. So um, again, this predictor was not statistically significant, but given that this value is less than 1, the general interpretation would be that uh, with each increase on uh, political conservatism or self-identified political conservatism, the odds change by a factor of 0.915, meaning that, um, that um, greater conservatism would be associated with a lower uh, confidence in the scientific community. But again, this is non-significant, so I'm just kind of giving you a general flavor of what the odds ratios are uh, meaning. Then we have our number of words correct in a vocabulary test. So the odds ratio is 1.264. So given that that number is greater than 1, that's basically indicating that um, for each unit increase on uh, the number of words correct, the odds are changing by a factor of 1.264, or basically the odds are increasing that a case will fall in a higher category on the dependent variable. Okay, so that pretty well wraps up this video presentation on the proportional odds model. Um, again, I would encourage you to download a copy of the PowerPoint as it does go into a lot more detail than I was really going through in this uh, video presentation. So I appreciate you watching. You, you guys have a great day.